the 16th Olympic Games, Melbourne, Australia. Bobby Morrow of the United States wins three gold medals, the 100 meters, the 200 meters, and is anchor man on the four by 100 meter relay team. He is given the title of the fastest man in the world. This is Dr. Dave Sim of Key Biscayne, Florida. Today, he is one of the most respected ophthalmologists in the country. In 1956, he was thought by many to be the fastest runner in the world. A few months before the Melbourne Games, he pulled a groin muscle. He did not make the United States team. That was one of the most disappointing times in my life. I had beaten Morrow, I felt I could beat him. He went on, won three gold medals, which I felt were mine. I used that, uh, quote, tragedy in my life to, you know, go on and, and do something else, too, for which I'm very happy now. It is four years later, Rome, 1960. Dave Sim, age 24, a second-year medical student, has qualified for the 100 meters. Sim's teammate, Ray Norton, is the favorite to duplicate Bobby Morrow's feat of winning three gold medals. Norton was, at that time, the best sprinter in the world. He had been undefeated. No one had beaten him for two years. And the second time I raced him in, in practice, I beat him. And I believe it got to him a little bit. And the next time I raced him, I beat him again. So I, I got stronger, and, and he got kind of weaker. And at the time we went over to Rome, I, I would say I was the number one uh, sprinter for America at that time. This is Armin Harry of Germany. He became the first man to ever run the 100 meters in 10 seconds flat. Armin Harry is also outspoken. He has no reluctance to tell the press and his competition that he, Armin Harry, is the finest sprinter in the world. He was very arrogant. He was kind of a childish guy. He would, you know, always wear crazy hats and he was always shooting his mouth off about something. And I, I didn't uh, like him too much from what I saw of him. Armin Harry earns the reputation of being the fastest starter in history. Many believe he actually beats the gun. Harry agrees to undergo a technical examination to determine his reaction time to sound. The findings, Armin Harry is able to react to the gunshot three times faster than normal. It is September 1st, 1960, the final of the 100 meter dash. In the quarterfinal and semifinal heats, Armin Harry and Dave Sim faced each other twice. Both times, Harry defeated Sim by three feet. Now he would try for the gold medal. Sim, lane one. Frank Budd, lane two. Norton, lane three. Enrique Figueroa, lane four. Peter Radford, lane five. Harry, lane six. Harry, closest to the camera, leads at 50 meters. Sim at the top is closing fast. It is a photo finish between Harry and Sim. Well, I knew I had done well. I thought I might have won, but I wasn't sure. I knew I'd run a very good race because I had beaten three Americans who were next to me. I had beaten Norton and I had, meet, I had beaten Bud. Bud got off to a great start and I passed him in about the last 20, last 10 or 20 meters. But I wasn't sure uh, where Harry was. I didn't see Harry throughout the race. After several minutes, the decision is announced. Armin Harry first, Dave Sim second, Peter Radford, Great Britain third. Harry and Sim are given the same time of 10.2, tying the Olympic record. I was very sad. I wanted to win it. I felt good that day, and uh, I felt that that race was good enough that I could have won it, and I was disappointed. But I would like to have run the race over again, he and I being together. I might have beaten him, or might not have, but it would have, uh, I certainly would like to have, have done it again, naturally, coming out second. After the race, stop action photographs of the start were published. Dave Sim had visual proof of where the race was lost. Our initial reaction to the gun was about the same. After the first step, Harry was uh, two feet ahead. He sure had a second and third step that were out of this world. He really, uh, really jumped out. It is Thursday, September 8th, 1960, the final of the 400 meter relay. The favorites for the gold medal Germany and the United States. Bud will lead off for the United States and will pass to Norton for the second leg. 
The order of the German team creates a mild surprise. Harry will not run the anchor. He will run the second leg against Norton. The German pass off is perfect. Harry moves down the track. But there is confusion when Bud passes off to Norton. While the race is still in progress, the lane judges are already in discussion. The final pass off. Dave Sim on the top runs stride for stride with Martin Lauer of Germany. The United States wins by one foot, Germany second, Soviet Union third. But Dave Sim does not feel the complete exhilaration of victory. I had a suspicion that we were disqualified. I thought I saw a white flag go up and I wasn't sure whether we were disqualified or another team was disqualified. I know that the bad pass where the uh, mistake was made cost us probably four yards. I mean, I think we could have, you know, put the world record out of sight at that time. The photographs reveal that Ray Norton starts running too soon. Norton tries to stop himself from going over the line. He fails. When he receives the pass off, he has gone too far. I was very, very upset, and I was upset with Norton, and I told him so after the race. And uh, despite the fact we were good friends and still are, uh, it was, I was really upset, more of anger than disappointment. The German team is awarded the gold medal, the Soviet Union second, Great Britain third. History has repeated itself for the United States for the second time in a 12-year period, with one main difference. In 1948, the United States protested and the decision was reversed. In Rome, there is no protest. Dave Sims' Olympic career is now